All right. Halloween special. Please find a medita Halloween meditation special. Uh, let's take a comfortable seat and settle in. Yeah, this outfit is very, very warm. So I'm going to take it off, but um, we will still talk about Halloween and, and, and how that can aid in meditation practice. The, uh, the, in the spirit of dressing up, there is uh, this idea of adding uh, a layer of meaning so that the what is behind the veil that was the in the origin of the the holiday Halloween. There was this idea that we're in the the veil is covered right now, and um, we live in the real world. This and it's this it's the world of the I'm a person, and there's rules, and this is how life goes, and we live in this sort of grid like structure that's totally designed by our mind. And um, some of the lore behind Halloween, um, and we see it in so many cultures, is this time of year, they would say that the veil gets thin. The veil gets thin. And so for us, as meditators, we can think of the veil as the, the conscious thinking mind, the rational, logical, and now very much so scientific, fact-based mind. And when we wear costume, we give an opportunity for what's behind the veil to play the tricksters, um, to act the devils, the imps, whatnot. And the, the meaning of those words have changed over time. We're not gonna get into that tonight, but to think that when we meditate, we are trying to slip beyond the veil. That the veil is thinning this time of year. And it's that veil, it's almost like a sensor. One teacher I had thought of it like a psychic sensor. When we, you, you all witness the psychic sensor when you're having a dream, usually a very powerful dream, very meaningful dream even sometimes. It might be a little scary. It's, it has a different kind of weight to it. And all of a sudden, you jolt awake. You might even wake up and say, oh, I wish I could go back into that dream. I wish I could figure out what was going on there. I don't know if you know that experience or not, but we would call that the psychic sensor. You're, hey, my 2D material world, grounded thinking mind did not like what it was seeing there, and we hit the eject button. And so as meditators, we're trying to soften our psychic sensor. We want to be able to look around the corner. We want to be able to look behind the veil, but we don't want to get in trouble. We don't want to get tricked. And so we build a long-term consistent practice so that we can pass through. And we even wanna pass through these tricksters, these dreams, this one layer beyond the conscious rational mind where the imaginative and the meaning makers exist, the gods. We wanna go even further than that. We want to go past that veil too into a deep layer where we don't necessarily feel that distinction and separation. And so there's layers. And a good meditation practice, you can feel those layers and you can feel that you are passing through them. And so that's what we'll work on tonight on a night when the veil is thin. We can sink past our rational conscious mind into a place a bit more magical and in time more peaceful.
the idea even, some of the allegory behind a trick or treat is that the fright, the surprise, actually can help take us out of our day-to-day -day rational mind. And so there's other ways we have, softer ways. One is to be with the breath. We'll really concentrate on the breath today because the veil, if you think about the metaphor of a veil, you can imagine like a curtain, a shade. And if the breeze blew, the curtain, the veil would move. You can kind of think of the gloomy wake of a dress as the moon rises, of a witch dancing in the cemetery, calling out to the spirits. This veil, this curtain, this shade moves with your breath. The idea is that we start to fall so entranced with the rhythm of our breath, the feeling of the breath moving in and out through the nose, that all the things that are fixed and concrete, they start to move like an extension of that veil that they only appear hard and concrete, matter of fact, to our conscious mind. But as we pass into these deeper layers of ourself, we realize they are anything but fixed. They are vibrating energy. Let's spend some moments now slipping into the rhythm of our own breath. You can think about the layers of your mind. We'll go on a little visualization tonight. You see the witch with her, her dress, her veil. The breeze blows with each inhale and exhale, and she's in a moonlit cemetery. And it's just quiet, nothing going on. If you look in the material world, Perhaps you see her dancing in the breeze with each breath. As she dances, she feels the rhythm of the wind, the breeze. There's quite a bit going on in that cemetery. It represents the past. It represents our memories. 
and the stories we've lived. And she's stirring them. She's waking them up in the breeze of her dance. They could shock and scare one who was not ready. But on a night like tonight, she consciously chooses to be there, to look through, to look beyond. You may see some haunts, some spirits coming up out of the graves swirling around in your breath in the dance of this witch. She is not disturbed. She is not shaken by it. It's her doing after all. And watch her dance in your mind, but more important, feel that whatever visualization you have is connected to the rhythm of your breath. That is the rhythm of her song. This is what makes the concrete etheric, malleable, soft. Do not be shaken by the faces of the specters of your memories, of your story. Go on with your dance, moving the veil in the breeze. Deepening your attention, deepening your focus on the rhythm of the breath. You must know and believe there is something beyond the veil. You must trust your practice to take you there.
and you might get some glimpses beyond the shade, beyond the veil, beyond the spooks and haunts of your memories, into this quiet, mist-like realm This is where the magic comes from, they say. This is where fresh ideas live. And so you can bathe in that magic. But you need the breath, the dance of the breath to carry you there. you're enjoying this graveyard and which visualization you can keep working with it. I'm going to give you another classic one to reinvigorate the practice. You can also work with the breath is still our practice, but now it represents the rocking tide of a lake you can see a boat bobbing left and right or up and down. You can even hear the boat bump against the dock with each exhale. It's a rowboat. It's nighttime. The moonlight reflects off the lake surface. As you walk down the dock, watching the boat rock back and forth to the pace of your breath. This myth talks about a ferryman. He holds a lamp, a yellowish orange lamp light. And he's covered in a cloak and a hood. You cannot see the ferryman's face. And in this tradition, you would give him a coin. This coin represents your earthly body your earthly attachments, your cravings for physicality, safety, security, all those earthly things, food, 
and you hand him this coin, you say, hey, for a little while, I'm going to travel to a place where we can put those things down. And you hand it over to the ferryman. You can come back. But there's something beyond the shores of physicality for you to discover. And so you have to let your attention go from those physical cravings. So you can imagine some kind of coin that represents that to you as you step onto the boat. And you feel the boat rocking as the ferryman unties the boat. The lake rocks to your breath. Ferryman starts to paddle and row again to the rhythm of your breathing slowly. You move away from the shore into the lake. Feel the rowing of the ferryman towing you with the rhythm of your breath. This lake, the water, it's your emotions. It's those feelings that tug you into your stories, your dreams, your hopes, your fears, your woes, your grief. All of that lives in these waters. We find those waters so compelling, sometimes you make the mistake of looking over the edge of the boat. When you look over the edge of the boat, you see the faces and the bodies of those who you care about and those who you have cared about. They are not the present moment. They are only the memories. But when you look at them, you feel. And it may even feel like you're drowning, like they are reaching up, trying to pull you off and out of the boat. That's how powerful our memories can be. For many meditators, you say, can I have my coin back, please? I would like to swim back to shore. You can look as much as you want, but staring into those waters, it will not make those memories the present. You must believe and trust in your practice, in the rowing of the ferryman, in the rhythm of your breath, that it will take you beyond.
When you learn to not look down, you sit in place where you are. You are on this boat. Your practice is to traverse the waters, to cross through the allure of those memories mixed with your emotions. You cross that realm of a lingering past. And you end up here in the rhythm of your breath ferryman's rowing and you enter a deep mist on the lake you can't look over the edge anymore there's mist in all directions you can't even see your nose you feel the glow of that mist lit up by the moon. This glowing mist is a reprieve, bathing in an ambient light of awareness, but it is not the destination. As you continue, the mist fades, the moon Obscured by a cloud, it is now dark, very, very dark. No stars, no moonlight. You can't see the lake water from the air. It is so dark, you can't see the boat. You can't see the ferryman, but you still hear and feel the rowing, the rhythm of your breath. is your only companion in this darkness. The only thing you could hold on to, the in and out of breathing.
so much darkness, so little to look at, to grasp. You even forget your breath. Lost, but not really, in the void, in the empty darkness. We learn to be free here, be okay, to move on from seeking, to trust the practice that you are being guided through the empty darkness where there is no light at least that's the way it appears to you. you start to realize if there was no light, how do I know it's here? You start to realize you are a light source. Your knowledge of this empty darkness is light. You can witness your witnessing. You can witness this silent light. Where else could this breath take you? What other destination is this boat rowing to?
knowing you are the only light source that matters. You start to see again the mist, the glow of magic. You start to see again the water of the lake. You smile at the faces of your past. They smile back, happy to have lived with you. And you find the dock. You thank the ferryman you realize he has no face. There's nothing underneath that hood. It was your breath. Back on earth solid footing, you feel your body, but it's different now. You realize the only way you feel a body, know of a body, is because of you. Relax from the practice. 